Tajuddin Ibrahim, Director of Research and Strategy at Chapel Hill Denham, uh, joins me and now. Yes, um, he's joining me from Lagos. Guys, can you mute this? I can hear myself. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Tajuddin, good to see you. Is it okay to say lockdown we'll see, really? We haven't seen in a few months, virtually. <laughs> uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Wow. I hope you are keeping well as well. I am keeping well. I'm trying. Thank you. I hope you are also well. I'm good. Thanks a lot. Fantastic. Now, let's get started. We're looking at sep September MPC meeting. Uh, the meeting started yesterday, two-day policy meeting as usual. Uh, it ends today. Hmm. Long road, is it? Is it a long and tiring road for CBS MPC? Well, it, it depends on the way you know you look at it. Um, you know, if we say it is a long way, uh, you know, I would say it is indeed because a lot of things have happened this year, and not um, not just in Nigeria, but you know, globally. And you know, some of those things are having impact on on us as a country, and we do not appear to be. Uh, you know, well prepared for those kind of shocks, uh, you know, that are eating us externally. So, so I, I would say it is one of the, you know, challenging periods, uh, you know, for the Monetary Policy Committee of the CBN in terms of, you know, making decisions. What, what do you expect to see? What do you expect to hear later today? Do you think there will be any bazooka for the MPC uh, after today's meeting? I know they will still be meeting now. Uh, they're expected to brief the press later this afternoon. What do you expect really? Because during my analysis earlier, I said, I can't really remember the country now. My, my brain seems to be failing me right now, <laughs> but I know that a few days ago, a central bank um, reduced interest rates. I don't think it's South Africa. South Africa, you know? Anyway, um, reduced interest rates. So I don't think the CBM would do that. That's my own analysis uh, because, but it's, they should stand between raising again and perhaps muting it to just take a look at how uh, the situation pounds out, raising on the basis that inflation was up again to 20.5% in August, uh, muting on the basis that, okay, we raised at the last meeting 14%. Let's still watch, you know, how it can actually also permit. That's my own reading, reading of it. I don't know if yours is different. Okay, so uh, thank you for that. You know, at Chapel Hill Denham, for instance, our view is that you know the MPC is going to you know hold interest rates um, at the meeting that they are currently having, and you know we believe you know they they wouldn't consider raising interest rates now, and our view is based on you know what we are seeing on inflation so if we you, you rightly said that inflation hit um you know above 20 percent uh, in the month of august but my sense is that if we take a look at inflation and we consider it on a monthly basis um you know that is when we'll probably you know be getting it right instead of you know looking at inflation on a year-on-year -year basis this time um, inflation on a monthly basis moderated in the month of August. And interestingly, that is the first monthly moderation that, you know, we saw, uh, you know, for this year, you know, over the past eight months, you know, coming down to 1.77% from 1.82% in the month of July. I think that is worth um, you know, considering as one, you know, sort of result in terms of inflation slowing down. So it, you know, I, I think, you know, the, the MPC, you know, will consider that and, you know, you know, feel that, you know, they, they should hold interest rates unchanged and watch how, you know, inflation, you know, develops further over the next, you know, two to three months. 
when before they have the, um, you know, the final meeting for the year. So, but it is worth noting that both food inflation and core inflation on a monthly basis dropped in the month of August. Now, if, if we take a look at it, and let me go back to the previous meeting that was held in July. I think that was when they raised the interest rate to 14%, if I'm not mistaken. Do you think that... That's correct. Yes. Do you think that perhaps the MPC at that time did not wait enough, did not wait enough to see through how inflation will go high enough? Because even as at that time, inflation was around 18.6%, if I'm not mistaken, then it rose to 19.6% or nine, yeah, in the range of 19, then now 20%. Do you think that they might have not raised interest rates at that time so that they could have uh, uh, enough room perhaps to raise interest rate now that we're seeing headline inflation, especially hitting the 20% margin, in fact, almost crossing to 21%, 20.5%. Yes. Well, I think I, my, my sense is that, you know, inflation, so the decision made by the MPC at the last meeting was appropriate because, um, you know, they had to, to do something to, number one, move in line with, you know, global uh, central banks because, you know, globally central banks are tightening monetary policies and their actions are having effects on emerging and frontier markets so we cannot you know close our eyes to that so the decision to raise interest rates the last time in my view um, you know was appropriate and you know it's further sort of you know sent um you know some signals around um you know their decision or um, you know, commitments to ensure price stability. And, and I think, you know, what we saw in the month of August is partly a reflection of, you know, that, you know, interest rate hike, you know, that we had because um, it, it's partly a reflection of the, you know, the moderation in inflation that we had in, in August. So, so if, if we consider this, this, the demand side, on the demand side, you know, we recognize that we are seeing, um, you know, speculative demand on uh, the currency, for instance, that can, you know, partly fuel, uh, you know, inflation. So, so that is one thing that I think, you know, the, the CBN is really focused on, you know, to tackle. But this time, I believe, you know, the CBN should hold and watch you know, the impact or the effects of the recent hike um, that we had in, in July over the next you know, two months. They, they should watch it in September. Let's see what happens also in October and to a large extent, the first you know, two to three weeks in November. By then, you know, we will have a clearer sense around where inflation is really heading. I think food inflation can be positively impacted by harvests. So when we get you know, more harvest, we most likely are going to see a bit of a slowdown um, on food inflation, and that will positively impact inflation. So my, my sense is that they, they did the right thing the last time, but this time I feel they should you know, wait and let's see the impact of the recent hike that they implemented in July. Now, um, Tajuddin, let me still interrogate you further on what you said in terms of where you stand and perhaps where even Chapel Hill Denham stands with the MPC at this point in terms of uh, retaining uh, interest rates at 14% where it uh, was left as at the last meeting. How much wisdom is, is there in that? Bearing in mind also that, that there are fears of global recession at this time, or at least recession in developed economies like uh, the U.S., the U.K. is passing through its own turmoil as we speak. We saw that the pound sterling was hit uh, very badly yesterday. And uh, Liz Truss, the new prime minister, is still trying to get a hang of, of what she will do to save uh, the British economy. Having said that, this week, okay, just a few days ago till today, we've seen central banks across the world, most of them even hiking in interest rates, including uh, South Africa. I was listening to the South African Central Bank uh, governor. What's his name again? Le Le Leso. Uh, it starts with L. 
<laughs> anyway, I was listening to him just a few days ago, and um, Central Bank of the Reserve Bank of South Africa raised interest rates to 6.25 percent. Among other banks, I think Philippines, Saudi Arabia, Hong Kong. Uh, UAE, uh, which other countries, Switzerland, Norway, these are the countries that have raised interest rates at least in the last few days. So how much wisdom is, is there in what you've just said in terms of how the CBN mirrors other global central banks? Okay, so one thing that, you know, I believe, you know, the CBN will also be focused on is the um, economic recovery of Nigeria. And even the CBN Monetary Policy Committee agrees that that recovery is fragile. So it will be wise to raise interest rates cautiously, um, you know, in my view. So if you go all out to, you know, be more aggressive than you should be as a policymaker uh, by raising interest rates, what it probably will lead to, uh, you know, is you damaging the, the, the weak uh, economic growth that, you know, we are currently seeing. If you talk about economic growth, um, you, talk, you talked about, you know, the fears of recession in the U.S. and some other advanced economies, for instance, and those fears exist. And, you know, we should also be careful on, on that front. That is the wisdom there. Our recovery, we are recovering as an economy. But when we look at the growth rate of our economy since the second quarter of last year, when the economy uh, recorded about 5% growth, the growth rate has been falling up till up to, you know, 3.5% in the second quarter of this year. So you want to be careful as a central bank by utilizing interest rates, you know, to, to force down inflation, particularly when we know that, you know, the, the larger part, you know, portion of our inflation, inflation in this country is driven by, you know, cost impacts, cost increases. So we should look to address, you know, that, you know, structure. In other economies, the advanced economies, what is driving their own inflation is largely speaking the demand factors. So it, it is, um, you know, natural for them to utilize interest rates, you know, to, to force, you know, inflation down in, in those environments. But ours is not completely demand driven, but largely costs are, uh, you know, pushed. So, so the, the central bank, you know, would have to apply some wisdom in that regard by being careful to, to raise interest rate further, and if they, if, and if you look at the, the monetary policy rate as well, it is currently at 14 percent, and 14 percent has been the highest yeah. that we have seen at least over the past 10 years. So, do we want to, um, you know, increase, you know, that rate further so that, um, you know, consumers are not encouraged to borrow? so that small businesses are not encouraged to borrow. If consumers are not encouraged to borrow, you are not going to see um, you know, the growth of the retail sector of the, of the economy. If SMEs are not able to borrow at reasonably um, you know, you know, attractive rates, um, you are not going to see the growth of SMEs and small businesses in the country. And if we take a you know, four-quarter view at it, over the next you know, 12 months, chances are that Nigeria will record economic growth that is below 3% just because we are hiking interest rates too much. Those are my views. Mm, quite interesting views. Um, if we take a look at how market participants have been managing this, this price risk, how do you think they've been managing it? How are market participants managing this uh, price risk so far? So when you say price risk, do you, are you are you referring to how they've been managing inflation? Inflation, risk? yes. Yes. Yeah, so so market participants, to be honest with you, have not you know really been able to achieve much in terms of um, you know the movement in inflation. Um, you know, as we speak, all the bonds in the in the market, talking about naira bond in this case, uh, you know they are below. You know, inflation. Maybe with the exception of you know one, uh, you know, a, like a twenty-year bond, but every other one is is, is um, you know is is below 
In fact, the 20 year bond is around 14% plus, and inflation is you know, at 20.5. So every money manager in the market is recording negative real growth, uh, negative real return um, on their investment in terms of yield. And I think you know, this is going to linger for you know, a bit further uh, up until when inflation begins to come down um, materially next year when we have um you know when we have a low base effect you know you know playing its role in that regard the second element is around you know you know those that are stock investors talking about equities in this case you know the, the story is the same because year to date the market is up only about 15 percent and inflation is about 20.5 that speaks also to you know negative you know real return uh, if you look at it from that perspective what do we expect what we expect is that money managers will be you know taking advantage of any switch in in, the, in demand in the market uh particularly as they play in the medium to, to long term uh, end of the yield curve uh you know for for bond investors in, in terms of the equity investors our sense is that there are some high quality names that have beaten inflation if you if you take a look at them individually those are the names where you know most money managers should be in my opinion but you know generally speaking it has been tough for money managers now our interest uh, our inflation rate is really stubbornly high at 20.5 uh, percent and we've seen the gradual uh increase over the past couple of months. I think this 30.5% is the highest in 17 years, if I'm not uh, mistaken. If you take a look at this uh, inflation, really, at what point or rate do you think that this headline inflation will be unacceptably high? I hope you understand my question. I'm not saying play two. I get you. Yes. I'm not I saying play two. two. Um, I'm, I'm saying unacceptably high. At what rate would inflation in Nigeria be unacceptably high? I think, you know, when we talk about inflation, it is currently unacceptably high at above 20%. Because the last time we had inflation, you know, above 20% was around, um, you know, 2003, 2004. Uh, and in those periods, you know, we had it as high as like, you know, 28%. So when you have it above 28, 20%, it is already, um, you know, on an, uh, an unacceptable level. But, you know, our view is that it is not something that, you know, we are going to use interest rates alone, uh, you know, to address. We should look at, you know, some other structural issues such as, you know, security challenges, you know, that we all in this country agree that we currently have. Um, we should also, um, you know, look at, you know, how we are managing our foreign currency supply and demand. That is also, you know, something that, you know, the, 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 the authorities, you know, should look at and address. So if we address, you know, two or three of these factors, chances are that, you know, inflation on a structural basis will moderate by itself without us, you know, hiking, you know, interest rates. But I must say that when interest rate, when inflation rose to like as high as like 28 um, percent, you know, in, in around 2003-2004, uh, monetary policy rate uh, was around was around 19 percent on on average for a particular year. So, so those would be extremely high levels. But if we take a 10-year look at it, it is not that high. But if we go beyond 10 years, we go like, you know, 25, 30 years, it was as high as like an average of 19% in this country before. But those periods, it was interesting to know that businesses really suffered for it. So we wouldn't be calling for such periods again. Rather, we'll be looking to address, for, we'll be looking for the authorities to address, you know, whatever structural challenges, uh, you know, are pushing inflation to the roof. Okay, um, 
Tajuddin, can you hear me? Now I can hear you. Okay, okay. I was the one that lost you a bit <laughs> at the time. No, I didn't lose you. Yes. My my audio went off, so we had to like do a change very quickly. Okay, so let's take a look at um, the CBN's MPC because I lost a bit of what you said uh, towards uh, when you were ending that. Uh, but let me bring in this. Do you think that the CBN's MPC's um, decisions over at least in the last few months? Since we start, okay, let me take it from Russia-Ukraine crisis. And that happened, I think, was in February or March. If we take a look at their decisions from that time till now to also um, tame inflation, do you think as it has really yielded fruit? This question, is the answer really very obvious? Or is there a technical answer to that? Do I think it has really done what? Do you think that the CBN's MPC's decision, at least since Russia-Ukraine crisis started earlier on in the year, has uh, really yielded fruits? And I was actually asking if so, the answer is really obvious. If it's an obvious no, or is there a technical so, answer to that? So, so I would say, you know, it, you know simply put, it, it has not really yielded um, you know, the desired you know, re, you know, results. We, we don't need to... To, to shy away from that. Um, my, my sense is that, you know, there will always be a time lag um, in terms of decision, make, decision making by the authorities and, um, you know, the results, you know, showing or reflecting on the overall economy. Uh, bear in mind, we are a frontier market, um, unlike the advanced economies where you know when a decision is you know announced today you will begin to see the impact um you know in may, almost in fact immediately so so we, we really have not seen much the only thing i can you know point to is the moderation for the first time in like eight months in inflation on a monthly basis that we saw in august and i think you know that is not completely because of the decision of the mpc uh, it is partly because, um, you know, we had harvest and, you know, that, you know, somewhat, you know, supported, um, you know, the moderation uh, of inflation. So, so I, I think, you know, we have not really f uh, fully seen the impact. We should look forward to the impact uh, over the next, you know, two to three months to fully understand it. Mm. If we take a look at the Nigerian situation, and I, I listened a bit to what you had said earlier in terms of what is peculiar about our own inflation, perhaps we need to fix security and all of that. Do you think that inflation in Nigeria has come to stay at the stubbornly high double so, digits? So, so I would say it has come 20s. to stay if we do not... Uh, you know, high inflation has come to stay if we do not fix, um, you know, our security challenges. Let us put this, you know, in perspective. Um, you know, let's look at the farmers, um, you know, in, in, the, in the farms. The CBN, for instance, talked about uh, 4.21 million farmers that they granted um, you know, lend the, the, the credits to under the anchor borrowers program, and you know, so far they have lent about one trillion, uh, you know, to those uh, 4.21 million farmers. When you lend money out like that, you would expect output to increase. You will expect out increase output, the increase in output to result in lower prices in the market. But what about security? If the farmers cannot go to their farm to farm, uh, you know, to, to and also to harvest, then we are not going to see the impact of the lending, uh, you know, that the CBN is extending to them. So th this is the reason that, you know, the current administration really has to work on security. If security situations improve, we are going to see, you know, more positive impact uh, of that lending by the CBN to farmers uh, as output will increase and that, you know, should to a large extent, uh, you know, support a moderation in, in infl food inflation in particular. Let us also consider, you know, the condition of our roads. That is another structural, you know, issue that, you know, the government has to address. Um, if we have better roads, 
in transporting the goods produced in the farm to uh, the cities, you know, it should be relatively seamless and it should not be expensive. It should be protected as well. And that should be, you know, a, a, uh, the, the required um, size or capacity in terms of storage so that these, you know, farm produces do not go bad uh, before they get sold. Otherwise, you will still find out that inflation will be rising on the food front. So we need to address all those, you know, structural issues, which I believe many advanced countries do not have. They are well on point in, in terms of addressing those issues. We should look forward to addressing ours as well. Tajuddin, I, I just, I just want to take it towards a different slant, you know, and um, the slant is perhaps what could be the real prescription for Nigeria's inflation. And I heard you and I heard you, uh, you know, point blank when you talked about security, fixing security, infrastructure, things around storage and all of that. But we also know that these things are not short term. They are like mid to long term solutions. The real cure for Nigeria's inflation is anyone or perhaps the central bankers here in Nigeria and even across the world, do you think that they are looking at maintaining stable currencies, for instance? Uh, at this point, I'm not hearing any central bankers say that, what the central bankers are pursuing, especially around the world, Nigeria inclusive, is the standard dogma or the mindset of targeting inflation, so to speak, like almost depressing the economy depressing growth to fight inflation. So can we see even the Central Bank of Nigeria at, um, doing or having put structures in place so that we can maintain a stable currency? You've seen official rates 436 I read this morning. We've seen the parallel rates at over 700 Naira. And I know that the CBN has done quite, at least since in, a, in about a year now, they put in different structures Naira for dollar scheme, um, the BDC is not selling dollars to them. What else again, you know? Uh, uh, what's the RT200 and all of that? But are we seeing that the central bankers are thinking around even maintaining a stable currency, which would definitely also affect inflation, which could also be imported? Yes, I, I agree with you absolutely that, you know, a, a, you know, a stable currency is very important in ensuring that you know we have um you know stability of prices uh you know uh, across the economy but we all know in this country that you know we do not have you know a stable currency and that is not only because of you know what the cbn has done or what the cbn has not done it is also partly you know the way we behave in this country as citizens and, and I think we should just be honest with ourselves. Um, there are a lot of you know, speculative demand out there mm -hmm. for the U.S. dollars, you know, and, and, and those demands are putting um, you know, pressure on, on the Naira. So if you need a Naira in dollar for genuine reasons, there are channels to go to. And, and I believe the CBN is always ready to, to be supportive on that front. We, we do not you know, have to kill our economy because we want to meet dollar demand. Nevertheless, you know, my, my sense is that you know, the, the CBN should also look to ensure currency stability by boosting investors' confidence. And I think that is one thing that is missing as we speak. Investors, you know, foreign investors in this case, um, you know, seem to have lost confidence in the Nigerian market. So they wouldn't be bringing in their foreign currency. And bringing in their currency is, you know, one major source of supply, um, you know, to the market. And that supply, um, you know, uh, you know, stream seems to be drying and drying fast. So the, the, the CBN really needs to address that. The second thing they have to address is the wide gap, excessively wide gap between the iron heel window rate and the, the parallel market rate. In as much as we have that gap, those that are speculating on the currency will continue to speculate. And that gap could widen further before the end of this year if the CBN does not do anything to address it. One good way to address it is to consider devaluing the currency 
And at Chapel Hill Denham, our view is that the fair value of the Naira to a dollar is around 565 Naira to one dollar. You know, based on, um, you know, based on our model, you know, that, that, we, that we adopted only based on the real effective exchange rate model. So if they devalue the, the currency and the, you know, the supply to the market, investors that have re previously withheld their money outside of our country will be willing to come. And if they see good traces around liquidity flows in that market, they will also you know, be willing. So we need to really address um, in our currency issue. And okay. I think one key element, apart from addressing currency issue, is our denomination of the denomination of our Naira. I'm not sure many, you know, economists or analysts are really talking about it. And I'm not sure if the CBN is even willing to ensure that, you know, our denomination is, you know, addressed in, in terms of, you know, its supply and usage by Nigerians. When last did we see 10 Naira, 5 Naira, and even those coins that, you know, that we, we have in this country, nobody spent them because, you know, we, we do not, you know, you know, do the necessary um, you know, work to ensure that we spend coins in this country. Everybody will mark up to, mm. you know, by like 10 Naira or 20. by 15 Naira because actually. they cannot get you that change mm. that, you know, you want to get when you buy anything in any supermarket or any store. That is not the case in the U.S., not mm. also in the U.K. and some other advanced economies. So Thank we you. should go back to spending more of those lower denominations the rate at which uh, you know markets, uh, marketing people, or, or let me say shop owners, you know mark up prices is also affecting inflation. inflation. That is another area mm. to it or aspect of view yeah. to it. Um, thank you very much, Tajudin, at least for raising this your last point, uh, because a lot of people have been. If you go to the market, really every markup is up to fifty naira. If you go to a supermarket, for instance, you want to turn and they'll be like, take sweets, take sweets. <laughs> Even if you don't want to buy it, you buy it by force. Take sweets, take this one, you know. It's because they can't get 10 naira change and all of that. So I think it's something for the central bank to look at. Um, 30 seconds. Hey, uh, ten, in fact, 15 seconds. What's your rate outlook for the year? Because we've got to go now. Uh, the Reserve Bank of South Africa, um, his name is Leseja Kayango. Yes, that's the name I was trying to <laughs> remember. We've seen inflation come down in South Africa, but what's your rate outlook for the end of the year in terms of interest rates? But though their rates came down, inflation rate, they increased interest rates. But what's your own outlook for Nigeria? Very quickly, in 10 seconds, if you can. Nigeria, I think we will probably end this year at around 14 or 14.5% okay. on the monetary policy rate right. front. Okay. Thank you very much. I'll take you up on that when it happens, or if it doesn't happen. <laughs> Thank you, Tajuddin, for your insights this morning. Thank you. Have a good day. I've been speaking with Tajuddin Ibrahim, who is the Director of Research and Strategy at Chapel Hill Denham. We've been looking at the September MPC meeting expectations in about uh, two hours from now. Or there about one to two hours from now, we should get the decisions from the Central Bank of Nigeria. Trust this channel to keep you up to speed with it. I am Nancy Naji. Be the best you can be. And be that change that you want to see. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'll see you all again next time. Bye for now.